Hi everyone, I'm Peter Letterman of SoundSmith and I'm going to start a series of videos about how to align phono cartridges. So there are a number of things you want to do to align a phono cartridge and the first thing I want to talk about is azimuth alignment. What is azimuth? Well, that is the way the stylus fits into the groove of the record. So it's this adjustment this way. I happen to have here a an uh, older legend cartridge. This was a limited edition cartridge we made for VPI. It's very similar to our Paua cartridge. This one was sent back for repair. Uh, we're the only company that rebuilds all of our cartridges to new condition for 20%. And we do so repeatedly. Um, we value our customers and we'd like them to value our cartridges. So we do that. Azimuth adjustment. Well, azimuth is, is interesting and it's a little tricky because what you're trying to do is align the stylus to the groove. If the groove is like this, you don't want the stylus sitting off like this or this. But there's something else to consider, and that's is the stylus aligned to the generator inside the cartridge. Now, why is that important? Well, obviously, since analog vinyl playback is a mechanical system, you want to get the stylus mechanically aligned to the groove, all right? You don't want it sitting off like this or this. But how do we know when the cartridge is made that the stylus is aligned to the generator at the back of the cantilever inside the cartridge? Well, you don't know. What happens if it's off? In other words, what happens if you do get good azimuth alignment with the stylus with respect to the groove? But the generator inside the cartridge is not aligned properly. It's not been manufactured properly. Well, what happens is you lose channel separation. That's the ability of a stereo cartridge to put signals that are on one groove wall on one channel and another groove wall on the other channel. How can you fix that? You can't. How do you know if the stylus is aligned to the generator? You don't. You have to depend on the manufacturer to have done a good job. There are some instruments on the market which allow you to align the azimuth of a stylus. Uh, both of them are developed by people I know. Uh, they're wonderful instruments. But what you're aligning is really not the stylus. What you're aligning is the generator by these instruments. And you're hoping that the stylus has been aligned correctly to the generator at the time of manufacture. Whole other subject. So let's just talk about the azimuth adjustment and how it affects different styli and how it's going to affect performance. So a conical stylus, that's a full round uh, pointed uh, stylus. It's the least expensive type of stylus, easiest to make. Uh, we don't use a conical, but there are a lot of conicals out there. The Denon 103, for instance, uses a, a nude conical stylus. That is not as sensitive to azimuth adjustment as an elliptical or higher performance design styli. Um, the beauty of the conical, it's one of the advantages of it, is that it has a very small area on each side of the diamond that touches the groove wall. So having a little bit of azimuth misalignment is not going to affect the performance that much insofar as how the stylus traces the groove wall. Will it have an effect on channel separation? Sure. So in that kind of a situation you do want to try to adjust the azimuth to give you best channel separation because the stylus is going to fit the groove because a very small area on each side of a conical is going to touch the groove wall and it doesn't matter too much if it moves up or down that groove wall. Um, what happens when you get to higher performance styli? That is, styli that don't have a round contact point on each groove wall, but styli that are formed so they are elliptical. So the contact shape is actually pretty narrow. It's like this, or even a fine line where the contact uh, width is very low. It's very sharp, if you will, against the groove wall. Well, that's going to be much more critical. You want to align those to the groove walls in order that they trace <coughs> excuse me, the groove wall correctly. So 
How do you do this? Well, there are a number of methods. Unfortunately, there are a surprising number of tone arms in the market that don't allow azimuth adjustment. In my opinion, that's a mistake because the stylus can be off from manufacture. It can be not aligned correctly with the body of the cartridge. So just getting the body, sighting the body, and getting it normal to the record in terms of how the gap of the bottom of the cartridge looks compared to the record surface, or another method by using a mirror and making sure that it's level like this. Those are good methods. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, what do you do when you have a tone arm that doesn't allow azimuth adjustment? And again, uh, that's unfortunate because um, things can be off. They can be off a degree, two, three degrees, sometimes even more. Well, there are a number of ways of doing it. One of them is to cut one or two strips of business card and running it along the length of the uh, cartridge itself and tightening the two screws when they're in the arm so that um, they're relatively tight. And this will still allow you to uh, tighten one and pull the cartridge up a little bit or loosen it and tighten the other and bring it up again. So putting some strips of material, and again, it can be a business card or two, it can even be a small piece of insulated wire, a number of methods of doing it, that will allow you to get some tilt in a head shell that does not allow, or a tone arm that does not allow azimuth adjustment. If your tone arm has a removable head shell, there are some head shells out there that allow azimuth adjustment. We make one, another number of other companies make them. Those are advantageous because on a tone arm, again, that does not allow azimuth adjustment, it's a great option and it has removable head shell. It's a great option to get a head shell that has azimuth adjustment.